I'm supposed to talk about gene therapy and the general concept about the gene therapy. And for doing so, I thought it could be useful to give you some dictionary to understand what is the gene therapy and what are the uh, concepts that are important for you to go through any clinical trial in the future. Let's start with what are genes. As you can see in this slide, the genes are the functional unit of hereditary system that encode the instruction on how to make molecules which are called proteins. And again here you can see how the genes are located on the chromosome in the nucleus of the cells and when there are the altered genes they could encode the proteins that are unable to carry their normal function. And usually we have different genes and these different genes are responsible for coding of the protein. So if there are any genetic abnormality and change of the nucleotides, that will lead to the abnormal protein. And what that means? If you look again on the uh, slides here, you can see that we have two types of hemophilia, hemophilia A and hemophilia B. And genes which are encoding the proteins responsible for these two types of diseases are located on chromosome X. Usually in a human body, men and women both, they have 23 pairs of chromosomes. And 22 are very similar, and one pair is different where for women you have two X and for man there are one X and one Y. If the genes that are coding of factor eight in hemophilia A and in factor nine in hemophilia B would have the abnormal function. And that abnormality depends of type of the gene. And that is causing the different levels of Active protein could be less than 1% up to the normal level, and that is making a different classification on the type of the severity of hemophilia. The most important point is to understand the methods of the correction of the altered genes, and there are two methods, and the second one, which is gene therapy, is the one that usually used for both hemophilia A and B, and we have the initial part uh, of the gene editing which started recently. And both methods are to correct the altered genes and restore the protein function for factor VIII or factor IX. Gene editing is the replacement of a damaged DNA at a specific site in the genome using a normal template as a guide for gene correction. And that is clearly reported in this slide, how the guide corrected type of genome could solve the problem of abnormality of the gene. The gene therapy is the delivery of an exogenous functional gene to cure the disease. And two methods could be used by in vivo or ex vivo. In vivo, means the delivery of genes takes place into the body, for example, by intravenous injection. And in ex vivo, delivery takes place out of the body by introduction of the genes into the cell of the patient, and then cells are placed back into the body again. For in vivo gene therapy clinical trial, then we need Factor VIII or factor IX genes depends on what type of clinical trial we are looking for, which is encapsulated in a vector. Then we have the in vivo gene transfer by intravenous injection. Then vectors releases gene into the cells, and these cells are very important because the vectors should recognize the cells that are the site of the production of factor eight and nine. So in other words, if these vectors are the cars that they are carrying the gene, 
the corrected and the healthy gene, they have to find the receptor on the cells of the river where they can sit down and they can make the expression of factor eight or factor nine. And as you can see in this slide, the vectors are the most important carriers for the genes and usually they could be viral or uh, non-viral, but most clinical trials right now are used by virus inactivated vectors. That means you get the virus genome, but you make the inactivation and you are allowing the cell specific expression at the liver by the therapeutic gene expression. In this slide, you can see how the vectors or those cars that they are carrying the gene, they have to find the receptor where they can sit down and start the synthesis of factor eight and factor nine. And here is the starting the most important differences between the type of the vector. If the vectors are adenovirus or adeno-associated virus, they are not getting integrated and we call it episomal transduction. That means they are just sitting close to the normal gene of the cells which are supposed to express the factor eight and nine. For other type of vectors like lentivirus, these type of vectors are getting integrated into the gene and that means the expression is remaining for the entire life, but of course there are some diversity, which I think a patient should know about that. That regards the immunogenicity against the vector. For example, for adenovirus is high, for adeno-associated is intermediate, and for lentivirus is very low. And that immunogenicity is not against the factor eight or factor nine, is against the vector. This first adeno-associated virus could be used for the big genome, but the problem with this type of vectors, they usually are not really satisfactory because most of the population with different type of infection in the past have the antibody against the virus. And that's the reason it's not very convenient to use them. Adeno associated are those vectors that are usually used for the clinical trial in hemophilia. And about, I would say, 30 to 40% of the population could have the immunogenicity against the vector. And that's the reason why you can see now, in the clinical trial, you have the pre-screening of the patients to understand for every type of subtype of adenine associated, whether the patient has already an antibody gains, and that means that patient is not suitable for that specific type of gene therapy. And these two, as I said, they are not getting integrated, but also there are some limitations. We cannot use the big genes for this type of viruses. And for factor eight, we need to change and modify and adjust for using this type of vectors. Lentivirus, of course, these are the type of vector that can contain a big genome, so we can easily use them for factor eight gene therapy. They are getting integrated, so that means we have to be careful and make a good follow-up of the patient in terms of oncogenicity or if these vectors are sitting where they are not supposed to sit. Few questions that are important for the patient. The first question is, does gene therapy affect your own genes? So what is important is our experience. And the first gene therapy successful by Amit Natvani was eight years ago. And the level of expression of factor nine remained almost similar. And this is making us to make more deep thought about whether there is any integration or any insertion that we did not know and we have to keep into the consideration. So insertional mutagenesis could not be excluded due to the high level of the vectors. And that again is very important. Every patient wants more and more expression of the factor. But I think it's very important to understand which level could give which level of expression. 
and sometimes intermediate level might be even safer. And that's the reason why the scientific community is trying to understand which is the amount of the vector which could be safe for the patient, but also giving a stable and good expression level. However, the surveillance and long-term surveillance is extremely important. The second question is whether gene therapy means hemophilia will not be passed in the family anymore. And the answer would be no, since the cure is not at the germinal cells, the family transmission would not change and the cure would be only on a single patient. Is gene therapy a cure? I think at this point, with few slides that I showed you before, you are able already to answer this question. Depends of what type of gene therapy you are looking for. If the gene therapy is used by those vectors that they are not getting integrated in the human genome, that means we cannot really call it cure, is a very long term correction of the expression of the gene. However, still we don't know really how far we can go for the level of the expression. And if we have the lentivirus which getting integrated into the genome, then gene therapy is the cure. If the treatment fails, is it possible to get the vector injected again? I think this is again one of the most important questions that patients are doing to themselves. Unfortunately not. However, now the scientists, they are looking for the large number of the adeno-associated or other type of vectors that in the case of fail or loss of expression, the patient could in the future be treated with a different type of trial. So as a conclusion, I would say there are few points that a patient, when he's going through the clinical trial, should consider and should discuss during the counseling with his physician. The first question would be what type of vector has been used, which level of expression I'm supposed to have, and whether the physician knows what is the level of stability and the duration of the expression for this patient, at least how much the science knows about that, and some of the answer might not be strong enough because the science doesn't know yet, but it's important that during the counseling this issue is going to be discussed. About the liver toxicity, about one third or 20% of some of the clinical trials showed that two weeks after the infusion of adeno-associated vectors without corticosteroid treatment at the same time, the patient is having the increased level of the liver enzyme. That means there is some kind of the toxicity which is reversible by the short period of uh, infusion of corticosteroid. However, we still have to understand better about this toxicity and I think this needs to be explained to patients. As regards the immunogenicity, again there are two types of immunogenicity the patient should consider and the physician. I think a boy, a young boy during the reproduction want to make sure that there is not potential spread of the vectors, particles, for example, in his gonads and in the transmission, the mutagenicity risk. As I said, normally we are not expecting to have any insertional mutagenesis for the adeno-associated vectors. And however, the expression levels, if it's remaining for a long period of time, we need to keep an eye, and in some clinical trial, we might even need to go to the liver biopsy to make sure that there is no insertion of the genes into the cells and there is no mutagenesis. And I think more or less these are the classical information that at this point should be available for the patients. And I'm sure in a very near future, we would have more and more information about what is the result in the gene therapy. Thank you.